name is Fila Beck, and he's a rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And please, if you take a minute to share, share this video, and share my videos the next couple of days. I'm in Facebook jail. <laughs> a follow-up to a video I made a couple of days ago when I got in a Facebook altercation with this guy. He was kind of SJW, I think, um, who posted something about the, uh, the woman Doctor Who. And I made a joke. <laughs> I made fun of it. I didn't make fun of him. Made fun of that, and he got really. He just lost his shit like big time. Went crazy. Which again, watch the video. It's a funny video. So he 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 reported me to Facebook for something. I had no idea why. I have no idea what what rule I violated. And they put me in Facebook jail until Sunday. I can't post on groups or uh, comment on groups. So yeah, if you can share, that'd be fantastic. And I've been watching the 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 Mandal Oh, before I get into the review of Mandalorian, uh, Mandalorian, I am doing a special live stream on Sunday, December twenty second. My first live stream. I'm doing it with my rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan uh, Yochanan Bechofer. He's starting his his own channel, doing uh, uh, talking about politics and theology. He's a real rabbi. Like I'm, I look, I have I have smicha, but it's like I have it written on on a. Back and over, back, back at cigarettes. He, he has, he has real rabbinic. I think he has, he has a much better rabbinical ordination than me. He's a real. Anyway, so he, he watched the original Star Wars movies when he was a kid. He hasn't seen this. I don't think he's seen the the prequel trilogy. I know he hasn't seen the sequel trilogy. So I'm going to be bringing him up to date on everything that is Star Wars in the Disney Star Wars, and we're going to watch the look of horror on his eyes and and discuss <laughs> the terrible things they have done to Star Wars, which is not including the the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is a fantastic thing they've done to Star Wars, and it's left me very feeling very um, confused. Uh, confused about how I feel about Star Wars because, like, I can't imagine after seeing the uh, Rise of Skywalker wanting to see any more. I mean, I can't imagine going to cinema. But this stuff, this this was a near perfect episode of TV. It was, it was, it was beautiful, and it, it. I think it was just made to make the Rise of Skywalker look bad because it had everything in it that the Rise of uh, Rise of Skywalker absolutely lacked and was awful because of it. Firstly. We cared about all these characters. These are characters they built up for a scene. Not over that and that amount that long a time. This is this is only well, this the uh, seventh episode. So let's say uh, roughly thirty minutes each. There was so three. And a, we're about three and a half to four hours in, and that's how long we've known the character. We've known Nick Nolte's uh, not for what forty minutes, maybe. Fantastic character who we love, and all these characters we love. We care about all of them. And, and Rise of Skywalker, we didn't care about any of them. We did like it, I, who cares about Ray or Ray's and Mary Sue who can do anything? Who is the bestest ever? Yeah, it's, it just makes us a character. I don't, I don't care about. So this episode called the Reckoning. Cole, Cole Weathers, the guy in charge of the bounty hunters, gets in touch with the Mandalorian and wants to give him a job. He says the, the ex Imperials have taken over his planet, and he wants to assassinate... He wants the Mandalorian to assassinate the uh, the ex-Imperial governor, played by, what was it, the European movie director, Werner Herzog. So the Mandalorian doesn't know, is this a trap? It's a trap! He doesn't know if it's a trap. And so he puts together a crew, a really cool crew, <coughs> consisting of um, Cara Dune. I can't remember if that's the character name or the actor's name. She's the ex uh, the ex rebel shock trooper, which I don't know what that is. I've got to look that up. She's an ex rebel shock trooper who was introduced in the in the worst episode of the show, episode four. And then he goes and gets uh, the Ugnaught from the first. Was he in the first? Yeah, he was in the first two episodes, I think. Nick Nolte's Ugnaught, fantastic character who I just I just adored, and who you know who wouldn't adore him. Fantastically written, fantastically played, layered, three dimensional, a real, a real character. Which is again, this is not what we had in the Rise of Skywalker. It's sad. It's so hard not to compare. Why actually? Why wouldn't I compare them? They, they, they are. They came out the same bloody day. Um, fine. So actually, before we go forward, I think we can come off the fence and say the Mandalorian is a is a pretty darn good show. We've had seven episodes out of eight. Four of the seven been excellent. I will give nine a good nine out of ten. Four out of four. Three of the other three, we had the the prison break one. 
pretty good. That's a good fan film. I will give it a seven or eight out. Of 10. I'll give it a seven out of ten. Let's be let's be let's be harsh on it. And then they had the um, what was it the Bryce Dallas uh, uh, Dallas Howard episode, which, which was pretty darn weak. So let's give that a four. And then they had the Dave Filoni one, the Member Berries one on Tatooine. Uh, you just give it a five. So okay, so if the so the average is very high. The average, right now it's an average is getting like an eight out of ten, just off the top of my head. I think that 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 qualifies as a, as a as a darn good show. They got to they got to do they got to go pretty far to ruin this in the last episode, and I don't think they're going woke. I think they're going really really traditional western, which is oh, just freaking perfect. So fine. So they have a plan. They're going to hand over the baby Yoda to the the ex imperials, the evil ex ex imperials, and just I love that aesthetic. That whole like. Faded stormtrooper armor. Yes, I lo I'm loving this whole po post jet Jedi aesthetic in general. It it's working fantastically. Uh, so yeah, he he gets his crew crew together and they go in. They're going to go to the the Imperials. They send Nick Nolte's Agnol back to the uh, the ship with with uh, with Baby Yoda, and they just take his, his his pram with them. And then and then we get some just fantastic uh, fantastic fantastic filmmaking. Who is it? Is Deborah Chow uh, directed this one? Let's see if I can find her name. Uh, I close my MDB page. Whoever it is, it's the woman who's doing the um, Obi Wan Kenobi series, and uh, which I think I'm gonna watch. Like on, on the strength of this, yes, I I would totally w uh, watch that. But I don't know. It's it's, a, it's like Rise of Skywalker's in my head. It's messing with my head. I can, I don't know what to tell you. So anyway. But we have so we we have just a fantastic piece of filmmaking where they juxtapose Nick Nolte's Arnold riding back to the ship with the uh, uh, with the meeting and the assassination uh, of the the Imperial and Nick Nolte's uh, Titanic ride back to the spaceship is very much like Jeff, Jeff Bridges uh, uh, has a scene in True Grip. It came out with uh, how many is that ten years ago, where he's he, where he's he's riding. Overnight, uh, with uh, with this with this child with this girl who's been bitten by I think it's been bitten by a snake. He's got got to get it to a doctor. And he's riding, he's riding, he's riding. Just it was just an incredible, incredible scene of uh, piece of filmmaking, which made you like want to. And you just yearn for all these characters and their and their struggle and, and the. You know, here's the thing: progressive liberals they can't stand their when anybody has any struggle and when anybody. Has any adversity when anybody has anything that's like that makes life harder? But those are the moments that make us human, that make us shine, that make us into better people. And that was one of the moments that we saw on screen where we got we got Nick uh, Nick Nolte, which I wish I could remember his name, riding, 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 trying to get back 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 to the ship in time. And then you, know, you and we set him up as this guy of like incredible nobility and strength and character. You know, when when he's talking to uh, Cara Dune and saying, "Yeah, I will show you how you can free yourself with by good labor." Like it just, he is just such a fantastic character, and he's. Riding right, and then you get the stormtroopers get get word that he's over there. At the same time, you're having the the, the, the showdown with the uh, with the Mandalorian, the Imperial, and you don't know if he's gonna if he's if he's going to be uh, d double double cross or triple cross. And they pile on more. So they said there's gonna be four stormtroopers. They pile on more and more and more and more and more. And, more. <coughs> and uh, yeah, in, in the cut with this Titanic ride. Yeah, it, I, in, I think in, in literature there's uh, there's a uh, English. Um, in the literature, or did he exist? I think it was a, 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 a real person. Dick Turpin was a famous um, highwayman in I think the seventeenth century England, and he had this uh, Titanic overnight ride to York to to avoid, avoid the um, the police. I think maybe. I don't know <laughs> whoever it was, but it was, that, it was that kind of Titanic ride. And the the uh, the, uh, the speeder troopers are, are coming after him, and he it looks like he's going to make it. And you know he's not. You know he's not going to make it, but he's going. He's going, and he's. You know the reason why the Mandalorian uh, bought, bought, um, um, uh, bought, bought him on board and um, made him part part, part of this mission because he knows that he can say, "Look after this baby," and and Nick Nolte's Agnol will will give his life to do that, and that's exactly what he did. And you know it's going to happen, but the way they reveal it is perfect when you don't see the kill shot. 
you just and I haven't I have only seen it once. I saw it last night. You you just see the the baby Yoda on the ground. You go, oh my god, what happened? And you and the, and the speeder bike zooms in and, and picks him up. And you see Nick Nolte's uh, 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 dead, like just meters away from the ship. It's heartbreaking, and it's heartbreaking because you cared about him. Because and they, you know what, they had to do so little, so little work to build him up to be this incredible character. Uh, which again, what I don't. Why can't JJ just learn how to freaking write? You know, you, look, how much did he, did he get for that contract with uh, with Warner Brothers? You know, whatever that money is. Take a few weeks off and, and, and write some stories. You know, learn how to freaking write. Go back and learn your craft because Favreau knows his bloody craft and you can see it here and you can see it on screen. And if anything, this episode is just an embarrassment to Disney Star Wars that you can get this good, this this engaging, this wonderful, and then you put out that pap at the same time. It's, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-bending. So, oh yeah, and then right at the end of the episode, we have uh, the guy from Breaking Bad uh, shop. Uh, I can't remember his name. The guy from Breaking Bad, Gus Fring, shows up, and he, and again, he has this wonderful uh, aura of evil, of strength, of terror, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Now the the uh, the, uh, the Imperials have the Baby Yoda. Maybe we'll find out what what the hell the whole deal with Baby Yoda is. And uh, Mandalorian's captured. Uh, he's he's outnumbered. I think it was captured at the end of the episode. What's going to happen next? I can't wait to see. Uh, this is the future of Star Wars. This is the way. Uh, and I, I just can't wait to see, see see more of it. Thank you so much for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please do share. That will really help me out. Uh, and if you're free on Sunday between uh, 6 and 7 Israel time, which is between 11 and 12 East Coast time in America or 9 and 10 West Coast time, or in the UK that will be between... Uh, uh, between five and six. Uh, if 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 you're free to uh, to join me on my live stream, where I walk a a rabbinical newbie through the world of Disney Star Wars, and we can see his horror and disgust on his eyes in real time. Come on by; we'll have a lot of fun. Thanks so much for listening, and have a great day.